So are you a video producer and content creator that likes to have that wide cinematic aspect ratio but has to shoot in 1920 1080 Well, if you are, stick around because in this video I'm going to show you how to get that nice wide cinematic aspect ratio while you're editing without having to drop black bars in over the top of your footage and still having that flexibility to reframe ever so slightly. But then more importantly, I'm going to show you also how to get it out of DaVinci Resolve very neatly in that wide cinematic aspect ratio without a 1920-1080 frame and that ugly letterboxing that you may not like. Just before we get started, if you're new around here, let me introduce myself. My name is Alex. I'm a certified DaVinci Resolve trainer and a film creator. I've been producing content professionally for companies and brands for over a decade now across a whole range of different genres, be that wedding films all the way up to high-end commercials. And it's my passion really to share some of that knowledge back that I've acquired over the last decade or so and hopefully give you a starting point so that if you are a beginner in video production or video editing or video marketing, whatever it might be, that I can give you a bit of a leg up, help you adjust to that learning curve and get results a little bit more quickly. So if that sounds like you, please hit the subscribe button. I'd be very grateful for any support that you can show the channel. And hopefully there'll be lots of information and knowledge for you moving forwards. So without further ado now, let's get back into today's tutorial. Okay, so here we are in DaVinci Resolve. If I turn on the metadata panel and then look at the particular clips, we've got a lot of clips in here which are a mixture of 4K, so 3840, 2160. And we've also got a lot of clips that were not 31, 3840 for 2160. So particularly when we get to the end of the day and we're doing some of the party scenes, a lot of those are shot at high frame rate in a 1920 by 1080 aspect ratio. Almost all are 16 by nine, which is absolutely fine. So we've got that wide aspect and you can see in the viewer here, that's a full 16 by nine aspect ratio image. Let me close this panel off for a minute. And you can see at the moment that's okay. It looks all right. And we've got some other clips in, in this particular piece, which will look fine as well. If I click on the clip just after it, however, what you'll notice is that there's some black at the top. And this is because if I come to my inspector, you can see that my transform controls, I've got a slight change in the position here. Now that's because I want the black bars. I want the wide aspect ratio. And so what I did is I've edited with this particular feature turned on. So rather than bringing in the black bars that you used to have to do with PNG files and whatever, or PSD files and bringing them in, layering them on the top, and then editing all of your video clips underneath, DaVinci Resolve has a really nice feature for that called output blanking. So when you come to output blanking in the timeline menu, down to output blanking, you can turn on a whole range of different types of blanking. 235 is the one that I use. It's the one that is probably commonly most used as well. So let's click that and turn it on. And you can see that the black bars actually appear here and we lose the transform area where I've moved the clip down and that covers it nicely. And so what I've done is when I actually started editing this piece, I simply turned on my output blanking. And the great thing is I was then able to go underneath, select my individual clips and simply adjust their transform and find a nice sort of composition that I was happy with and then simply lock that in. In this case, it was this one and I'm good to go and I can move on to the next clip and so forth. And that's great because then when it comes to outputting, I can simply output this as a 1920 by 1080. It will output exactly like that with the blanking applied, happy days. The problem we've got though, however, is when it comes to wanting to put out the image in a different way. So we actually don't want the letterbox and we just want to put out the wide aspect video, which is obviously, as I say, commonly done in a lot of cases. And that's fine, we can do that, but we can't do it in the way that you might think. We can't simply go to the deliver page and in the once in the deliver page, simply change our resolution to a custom resolution of say 816 in this case, which would be about the right level of, of scaling and simply go to render out because it just won't work. And let me show you, for example, if I go to do that with a quick example, let me just get rid of this other one that I did before and call this 816 test one, render it to the desktop without any audio. And let's just render that out with that new custom resolution. And you'll see what happens. Although it looks great here, let's go to render it out and let's start the render. And you'll see that, okay, we've got something not quite right here because the bars are applying and everything's scaled. If I go to reveal that in the finder, you'll see again that there's definitely an issue with that. Obviously that's not looking how we want it. So let's just delete that. Close it off, clear the render off there and jump back to the edit page. Right, so obviously that's not gonna work for us. Although everything looks right here, 
we need to find a different way of doing things. Now, the great thing about DaVinci Resolve is it has a couple of features in its arsenal that help us with this particularly. First of all, I'm going to come to project settings. There's two ways of doing it. One is a project level, one's at a timeline level. Let's go to the project level first. So in project level, you'll notice that in master settings, my timeline resolution is 1920 by 1080. That's normally what I work to for the most part. It's the resolution I know I'm going to be delivering at. Even though I've got 4K media, I'm going to generally have DaVinci Resolve scale that down to fit the frame, and then I'll edit at 1920-1080. It just means that my machine will be a little bit more, a little bit less taxed, and again, I'm able to sort of output. And I also have the ability to then crop and pan and scan and around my 4K images when I do have one to recompose slightly if I want to. So that's the basic setting, and it's just worth noting that that's that there. If I come to image scaling, this is the important area that we want to look at. Input scaling, first of all, is going to basically choose all of the images as they come into the timeline and scale them according to this here. So anything that's 1920, 1080 will obviously fit perfectly because it's exactly the same as the timeline resolution. Anything that's been mismatched, so that is a anything that's not 1920, 1080, is going to be scaled to fit the entire frame. So what's going to happen is if you've got lower resolution clips, they're going to be scaled up. If you've got higher resolution clips, they're going to be scaled down. So that's important to have, and that happens before anything else. So that happens at input. So they come into the time, and then you can change and affect how those different mismatched files are going to, are going to appear. What we want to look at is the output scaling. So at the moment, we've got output scaling matched to the timeline setting. So obviously, we're going to match our output at 1920 by 1080, which is absolutely fine. But in this case, we need to change that. So let's go off from there. We're not going to take that at all. We're going to have a customized setting. And this is where we change the settings here. And we're going to go with that. Uh, whoops, something's gone wrong. Okay. That's not exactly true. We need to change one more little thing, but I wanted to just show you there's a little gotcha there. If you don't change something else, you're still going to get this problem. It's not going to scale correctly. Because at the moment, bear in mind, it's thinking the frame is here. It's thinking the frame is this area here with the blanking and with that image turned on. So we're scaling to fit the frame. Let's not do that. Let's go back to our project settings. We do not want to scale the entire image to fit. In our output scaling, we want to change it to center crop with no resizing. And now we're looking better. One thing we've got to do is turn off our output blanking, which is still on, and boom. Now we are absolutely where we wanted to be, where we were before with the perfect crop. And we can now output at this resolution, making sure our resolution set to the custom 192816, keeping that same render area. If I just come up here and do another test, Give it a name and add that to the render queue and render it out. You'll see that that's now rendering correctly. And then when that finishes, if I reveal that in the finder, you can see that that has rendered correctly, absolutely as it was supposed to have done. Perfect. Just what we want to see. And that would be it for the most part. However, there's a couple of reasons why that might not suit. And I'll go into that now. Basically, what we've done here by adjusting the project settings is affected every single timeline in our project. And that's a bit of a problem potentially because if you have got some times that are 1920, 1080 that you want to keep 1920, 1080, maybe you don't want the cinematic aspect ratio on certain elements, or you maybe want to do both, you want to have a letterbox version and a non letterbox version, then obviously that's going to give you some difficulty. So, what we're actually going to do is turn this back. You can just hit the checkbox there. Don't worry about this and hit save. That's going to go back, but obviously you can see that we've still got the transform error here. And actually, before we do that sidebar, let's just jump back a second. If I jump back and do this and change that back to the 816 that we were at before and hit save, obviously that's cropped in exactly as we wanted to. What's really cool, and I forgot to mention this, is if I click on this clip now, you'll see that the transform options have still come across. But also, if I click on the transform frame here, like I did before, you'll now see that the proper bounds of the frame show up. So now I can actually see where I'm actually adjusting the crop to and how much more media I've got to go before I start hitting the, the, either the frame underneath or a black area. And I can then set that accordingly, which is really cool. And I think that's really nice and flexible because you could easily edit in one way and then crop down and still have that flexibility to edit the way that, that I've shown you just here. So let's turn the frame off, leave that as it was, and let's jump back now to what I was saying. So we're going to match up the timeline settings coming back to here. Obviously, you can see this area here is not what we want. So let's go to timeline output blanking, turn that back on, and we're back to where we were right at the start, where we turned the output blanking on. 
This is all very well and good. And now our project's looking the right again. We've got all of our 1920-1080 timelines going out the way they should be. But we now still have this timeline that I need to make sure it goes out in a different format. Now, what I could do is let's say I like this particular format and I want to keep a letterboxed version. All I'd simply do is go to my timelines. So navigate to your timelines, however you want to do that, whether you've created a bin for them or you've turned on smart bins for your timelines. Go to the timeline that you're working in. And I would advise you do this. I would duplicate the timeline. So you've got a copy and then I'm just going to click gently and I'm just going to rename this to 816 just so I know that that's a different type of timeline and I'm going to load it up into my viewer. Another nice little tip here is I'm going to go across to the timeline and view options and turn on stack timelines. This essentially will give you timeline tabs in your workspace and you can just get rid of that one in the middle and um, we've basically got the two timelines now they'll be exactly the same of course at the moment they're exactly the same so that's fine. Let's go into the one that we're going to crop and change so we're now in the one that we want to crop and change highlighted in orange it's shown up here as well and now let's work on getting rid of these black bars. So obviously we can't do it in project settings because that will affect the other timeline. But what we'll do is we'll go back to our media pool. We'll go to our timeline that we're working on. Right click, come to timeline and timeline settings. Click timeline settings. Now we don't want to change the format, but we do want to change the output. And what we're going to do from here is obviously it's all grayed out. So we're going to use our custom settings. We're going to turn off use timeline settings for output scaling. And we're going to change this to our custom which you just have to scroll up to get to. And we're going to change that to the 816. We're also going to make sure that center crop with no resizing is turned on. And we're going to hit OK. And then what you notice is that that's cropped in, but we've still got our output blanking turned on, remember? So let's go and turn that off. And now we've got our cropped in image, which is perfect and as it should have been. And if we go back and forth between the two timelines, what you'll see is all we're doing here is losing the black bars. We're not changing our resolution. We're not changing our image at all. And again, the beauty that I showed you before is if I click this, we've still got all of the options to do the transform. The transform options appear exactly as they did before when I showed the frame. And if I've got media that's 1080 or 4K, it doesn't matter. It's all come across exactly as it should have done before. So if I click back to this particular frame, 2616. And I do the same here, 2616. There we go, one and two. Perfectly cropped, no problem at all. This is a 4K clip. If I find a 1080 clip, which is probably one of these dancing shots, this one here's a 1080 one. So this is a 1080 clip because it was shot at high frame rates. Again, it's just scaled, everything is fitting just right. It looks exactly the same over here as well. If I change it across, you can see exactly the same, exactly the same. So now from this timeline, obviously what we can do is go to our deliver page. You see it showing up correctly here. We can do another test. Output, make sure our custom resolution is set correctly, add it to the render queue. And let's do the same bit that we did before, roughly. And let's export that. And we're going to start the render. In fact, I've accidentally started it from the beginning, but you'll get the point. So here's the render going out. And I'm going to stop that. As you can see, here we go. So it's rendered out absolutely perfectly. Wide crop, aspect ratio without the letterboxing, perfectly acceptable. And then also what we can do which is really cool is we can mix that up in the render queue if you want to. So we could also go to another timeline by selecting up here, finding our other teaser timeline, which was this one here. In this case, so that's the other match timeline, obviously with the letterboxing turned on. And this time we're going to do a 1080 output. And this time we're going to make sure that it's matching up with the resolution of the timeline itself. We're going to hit render. I'm going to actually, no, I'm going to make sure that's just the in and out range, hit render. Hit start render and you'll see that that's now rendered out with the letterboxing. So we're quickly switching back and forth between the 1080, which is here. And then we've got the same one from the same project, but with a different timeline scaling setting. And we've now got the wide aspect ratio. Perfect. So obviously that's really helpful. And yes, you could just also create a timeline and bring in the footage and have it scale according to the timeline. I just personally find this is a lot easier because we can then sort of really complete an edit with the output blanking, finesse our edit, and then just simply 
crop the output blanking away and, and render out. And it just means that you've got the options of a letterboxed version or a non-letterboxed version, and you can get that wide aspect radio show out of DaVinci Resolve if you want to. So there you go, guys, not really much to it at all, but it was important just to take a moment to show you a couple of different ways of doing it, so that depending on your project or your workflow, you could apply the right method for you depending on which one suited your needs. Hopefully it's been helpful, and if it has, do take just a second to pop that little like button on for me. It would mean the world to know that firstly someone's watching and enjoying the content, but also that I've been able to provide some value and, and helped you with your learning and your video production side of things. It'd be really great to know that. Also, do leave a comment below if there's anything particular in the video that stood out to you, anything that you really learned that you didn't know before, or if there's anything else that actually that you'd like to learn or anything else that I, you'd like me to show. I'd be more than happy to go through those and I do look at all the comments and try and reply when I can. So don't be afraid, don't be shy, say hello in the comments below. And uh, finally, yeah, if you haven't to do subscribe before you pop off and do something else. There'll be some other videos popping up shortly as well, which are more about the same sort of thing. So stick around if you like another video. For now though, guys, thanks very much indeed. My name is Alex Cameron, and I will see you very soon. Bye for now.